Welcome back to the Chad HD Show on News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM KFYO. Joining us on the phones right now, the Director of Strategic Communications for the Trump 2020 campaign, Mark Lauder, uh, back with us here on the program. Mark, good morning. How are you today? I'm doing well. Good morning, Chad. Uh, I appreciate you joining us uh, yesterday. Uh, Joe Biden, I, I don't I don't, don't think he, uh, you know, technically clinched the nomination for the Democrats, uh, but he. it looks like uh, unless something big happens, he's going to be the nominee. Uh, when you look at Trump versus Biden, how does that look? How does that shape up uh, for the U.S. voters? Well, it really doesn't shape up anything differently than it would be if it was Trump versus Bernie. I mean, Joe Biden is no moderate. Let's not let's not confuse ourselves. I mean, A, this is a man who voted for NAFTA, supported TPP, which caused millions of our manufacturing jobs to be exported out of our country to the point now where we find ourselves in a crisis and we need to start bringing some of that manufacturing back to our country. He openly talks about ending energy jobs, tells uh, millions of American workers in our energy sector that they should learn to code. While we still have a – we're still a net exporter now for the first time in in many, many decades because of the leadership of this president, Joe Biden wants to end all that. He talks about trillions of dollars of tax increases at a time when our economy, even though the fundamentals remain strong, that we're going through, uh, you know, a bit of a blip because of the – because of this coronavirus. And – you, he raised his hand to say that illegal immigrants should be getting free taxpayer-funded health care. I mean, these are the same radical policies as, as Bernie Sanders. And I think when it comes push comes to shove, and this is a, a two-person race, the American people are going to face a very stark reality of this. Do you think, when I look at Biden, it, it seems, well, I think it's it's pretty evident, and you just laid out some examples he keeps moving further and further to the left. It, it, it's he's not a strong enough presence to tell Bernie Sanders, Ocasio Cortez, Ilhan Omar, no. <laughs> Is it, do you do you think that's right? I mean, does it, do, do you think that he would be able to have the the presence of mind to tell them, no, we're not going to do all these socialist Green New Deal ideas? Well, you saw that on the debate stage Sunday night. Yeah where Joe Biden is having to go further and further to the even more radical left than he already is, trying to basically buy the socialist vote of the Democrat Party. You know, he's talking about free college tuition, and it's basically just a continuation of the Democrats' free-for-all that they've been doing throughout their entire their entire campaign here. And the thing about Joe Biden, another thing to remember is that he is the same bad candidate he was a month a month ago yeah. when everyone was leaving him for politically dead uh, because he had no organization, no good message, couldn't even remember what state he was in half the time. None of those fundamentals have changed. Uh, they the party just realized. He's the only hope we've got to stop Bernie Sanders. And so I say the Democrats didn't settle on Joe Biden as a candidate. They settled for Joe Biden as a candidate. Hmm. Visiting with Mark Lauder here on the Chad HD Show, uh, you, you touched on it uh, a little bit ago, and that is the U.S. economy. Uh, obviously, we're it, it, it's not looking too good. The underlying economy. I think it's great. Uh, you know, the if we didn't have coronavirus right now, we'd be roaring along like we were. The fundamentals are still there, uh, but but how does you know how does what what's going on right now shape the the twenty twenty campaign? Well, I think two things. I mean, one number one, the, the American people need to, and I think they're happy with the fact that the president's focused on doing his job as president. Campaigns can come later, and so while we on the campaign continue to do the basic blocking and tackling that we're expected to do, the president is doing what he's uh, working on behalf of the American people right now, every day at the White House. He'll be taking this, you know, taken to the White House podium here again in about 20 minutes or so to give another update on what we're doing. But when it comes to the economy, I think one thing has got to be made fundamentally clear is that the fundamentals are sound. What we're seeing going on in the economy right now is no fault of any company or any industry, where we had the, the, the Great Recession that was basically caused by, by you know, bad decisions by investment banks and, and by the financial markets. You had the, the, the tech bubble burst in the 1980s and 90s. Those things were caused by businesses not making good decisions. Here, it has nothing to do with any of that. And 
So when we talk about the need to support our economy, we shouldn't be looking at this like bailouts. These are not bailouts. These are supporting an economy and companies and industries because something is happening that is no fault of their own. They had nothing to do with the coronavirus in China and having it come here. And because the president has had to take the strong action he did in restricting travel, encouraging people not to go outside, go to bars, restaurants, uh, businesses have been forced to cancel their conventions and, and business travel. We are seeing the domino effects of those things, of what we have to do to control this virus is actually having a negative impact on the economy. And thank goodness we've had such a strong economy under President Trump. But once we get through this, it will be strong again as long as we are able to make sure that the employees of these companies, the, the, the companies themselves, are not penalized for something that is no fault of theirs. I, I had uh, Senator John Cornyn on uh, about an hour ago, and we talked about the, the, the idea that the president floated out of, of sending checks to every U.S. Uh, U.S. adult, and and he he signaled his his openness uh, to that, saying that we're on a, basically a war footing uh, at this point. Uh, how important is it for Republicans and and this president to rally together and show unity, and 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 even maybe for the Democrats to show unity in this time? Uh, it's absolutely critical. I mean, our country comes together when we face crises such as these, whether they are military, whether they are economic upheaval, uh, or in this case, a public health crisis. We need to come together as a country and be able to do things for the greater good of the entire nation. It's not about Democrat and Republican. It's not red state, blue state. We're all Americans in this, and we need to come together. We need to recognize that there are significant portions of our country and people who work in industries that have been affected who are worried about their paychecks, yeah. worried about paying their mortgages. And so it's absolutely appropriate that, again, through no fault of their own, they find themselves in these situations. We need to be there as neighbors as we would, supporting them, which could include, obviously, financially to help them get by. We need to do our part, even as we're sitting at home. Go find that local restaurant that you that you love to frequent. You might not be able to go inside, but you can still order takeout. You can do those kinds of things to show our support for local businesses. And if we do that, if we come together during these next few weeks as we're doing all of these things, well, the resorts are going to open back up. The restaurants will open back up. The bars will be there for you. You'll be able to get back out and enjoy your normal life. And all of those places that you have enjoyed beforehand will still be there afterwards. But we got to come together and do this. As you said, it's a war footing, and it's against an invisible enemy. This is not like there's not a country we're fighting with. There's not even terrorists or groups that we're fighting with. This is an unknown, invisible threat that each and every one of us has a responsibility to come together and help defeat. You know, the when the president was elected, he had a... He was coming from a unique thought process, which is a businessman, right? And, and and I would have to think that with him as president right now and sitting in the Oval Office, he, he's not only thinking of, of the political, but, but he's got to be thinking of the business side of things as well. How differently do you think in a position we would be in right now if we didn't have a guy who knew business inside the Oval Office? Uh, it'd be completely different. I mean, this is a man who one of the first things he's done is getting government out of the way and bringing the private sector in, whether it is bringing the private labs in to be able to develop a faster test, a better test that can be quickly distributed out across the country. Or even I'll use another great example. While we have the underlying problem, there are parts of our country that are having problems getting the swabs that are used for these tests. So he sends a military jet to Germany to pick them up, brings them in. FedEx meets that plane at the airport and distributes those through their planes and their distribution networks to the places that need them. Mm -hmm. So not only is the president doing what's necessary with the private sector now, I can guarantee you that in the months ahead, he's going to be like, why are we not making these swabs here? Why do I have to send a military jet to Germany to go get them? Sure. And so we'll have all of those discussions. But he's also the first one to say, if you've got a better idea, if you've got a quicker test, a quicker vaccine, I'll get government red tape out of your way. And that's why we've actually this week started human testing on a vaccine in 65 days, yeah. record 
time. You don't have that happen when you have a bureaucrat sitting in the Oval Office. Yeah, amazing what we can do as a nation. Uh, before I let you go, you, you mentioned it just a little bit earlier. There, there is the political side. You know, we, we are you're, you're still involved in a campaign. Uh, you know, it, it may not be on the front and center of everybody's mind, but campaigns are still happening. Uh, even though there aren't rallies, what are some of the things that 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 the campaign is doing to to keep to keep things moving and and to keep you know the the, the campaigners active? Well, one of the things we have is we have one of the most large uh, and and uh, and one of the most uh, groundbreaking digital operations and data operations in the history of presidential politics. So we can continue. We're still out there communicating with folks who we know who support this president. But the other thing I would say to do is that if you're sitting at home right now, because you're sitting at home right now in front of your computer, go to armyfortrump.com. Sign up to be a volunteer, because at some point later this year, we're going to need those volunteers to go door to door, talk to their neighbors, make phone calls, do all of those things. Our training is still going on. It's going on online, virtually, and you can be trained right now while you're sitting at home. And so sign up at armyfortrump.com. Let us know you're out there. We'll keep you in the loop. And then when we are truly gearing up this November campaign, you'll be part of that army that will get the president reelected. Mark Lauder, always a pleasure to visit with you. We'll talk later. Absolutely. Good talk to you, Chad. That's Mark Lauder, the uh, Director of Strategic Communications for the Trump 2020 campaign.